Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video. And today, let's talk about some biographies of Jane Austen. So I realised the other day that I have now read six biographies of Jane Austen, which is quite a lot, so I thought that I would rank them today and tell you about these biographies. Uh, this is going to be a fairly loose ranking because these biographies are all quite different, I would say, and all kind of have different positives and negatives about them. Um, but I will start with kind of my least favourite and work up to my favourite one and just tell you a little bit about these various biographies. The first book I wanted to mention is one called Jane Austen Amazing and Extraordinary Facts by Henrietta Held. This one I read quite a while ago now um, and it's a very little and short book. I think it must be less than 150 pages, maybe less than 200 pages. Um, and it is set up in the kind of um, format of various facts about Jane Austen, but it is fairly chronological and it is basically a biography though in a slightly kind of um, light-hearted, pared-down way, I suppose. But this is quite a good read. Um, it's not as in-depth as any of the other biographies I'm going to be talking about today. It's definitely the most sparse um, and definitely the most kind of introductory, I suppose. I think if you know a bit about Jane Austen's life, you'll probably know everything um, that is in this book. But if you are relatively new to Jane Austen's life, if you really enjoy her books, but you don't know much about her as a person, then this might be a good place to start. I think at the time I was reading it, I sort of knew everything that was in it, but I I think as a more introductory biography it is quite an interesting read. Next I wanted to mention this. This is Jane Austen, The Banker's Sister by E.J. Clary. This is a very interesting biography and quite a different one um, and one that I really liked mostly and had a few issues with. Um, so this biography is a dual biography of Jane Austen and Jane Austen's brother Henry. Um, Henry was a banker um, as well as a soldier and a clergyman, um, hence the title. Um, and this is about Jane Austen, her relationship with her brother, their kind of lives as they were growing up, and also about the role of money and economics in Jane Austen's books. So in many ways it is a biography, though it's got a few other elements going on as well, and as I said it is a dual biography of both Jane Austen and Henry Austen. There are a lot of things that I really liked about this. I think it's a really interesting idea for a book. Henry Austen is my favourite Austen sibling and one that I find fascinating. So it's a really interesting read and I like the way it explores um, and examines Jane Austen's relationship with her brother and also the way that her brother's um, career kind of influenced her books. The thing that I do not like about this book though is that um, E.J. Clary does spend quite a while um, suggesting that there was some kind of um, incestuous relationship or incestuous feeling between Jane Austen and her brother Henry which is a bit ridiculous and very ungrounded um, and I thought that kind of had no place in this book and probably should have been edited out. There are just quite a few strange lines here and there which don't really belong in this book but otherwise it is a very interesting biography and if you can just ignore those bits it is certainly a good read. The next book I wanted to mention is A Memoir of Jane Austen by James Edward Austen Lee. This is quite a different biography from the others on this list because it is not a modern one. This was published in um, 1870, I believe, um, or the 1870s, I think. So this is a Victorian biography of Jane Austen written by her nephew, James Edward Austen Lee. Um, and it's about his kind of reflections and memories of his aunt. And my edition also included some other biographical notes from various members of Jane Austen's family and um, kind of looking back on their memories of her. So this is rather a different biography because it is of course um, kind of much more personal and also I suppose much more biased. Um, there's definitely a certain way that um, James Edward Austen Lee wants you to view his aunt um, and a way that he viewed her which is different I think from the kind of start a lot of modern biographers take. It's quite interesting to see the kind of legacy that Jane Austen's family wanted her to have. Um, it's a weird read because Victorian biography was a quite different form to biographies today. Um, like there's a lot of letters just inserted like in their entirety without any commentary um, and the structure is quite odd um, and there are also times where um, James Edward Austin Lee um, thinks it's kind of important to give his readers like historical background so he spends quite a lot of time talking about like the fashion and the furniture of the house that Jane Austen would have grown up in which is really interesting to like read that from a Victorian perspective but sometimes feels a little bit tangential. 
So this is absolutely not um, the place you start with a Jane Austen biography. If you want to start somewhere with a Jane Austen biography, you should not start with um, the memoir of Jane Austen written by James Edward Austen Lee. This, I would say, is something to read when you've read one, at least possibly two, Jane Austen biographies and you have a good sense of her yourself um, and you also kind of know a bit about her life because there are quite a lot of gaps um, and parts of Jane Austen's life that her nephew doesn't discuss um, and also because it is, as I say, it's quite sort of personal and biased. Um, and I think it's kind of trying to present a particular image of Jane Austen, which is, um, yes, a very intelligent woman, but also chiefly a kind of kind, ordinary, quiet um, woman kind of living a relatively reserved, um, sheltered life, I suppose. I would also recommend um, making sure that you read an edition of this that has notes in. My edition had notes from Catherine Sutherland, which I found really, really helpful in terms of kind of understanding the context of what James Edward Austin Lee is saying. The next biography I want to mention at number three in my list is Jane Austen, A Life by Claire Tomalin. Now, I have very mixed feelings on this biography. It's quite high up this list because I do think that it is a very good biography and I also do think it is a good place to start with learning about Jane Austen's life. This is the first biography of Jane Austen that I read and it did give me a really good sense of her life and really good grounding in her experiences, I think. It is a very accessible biography, it's well written, it's engaging, and I do genuinely think that Claire Tomlin is a very good biographer. Um, I have read one other biography by her as well, um, The Invisible Woman, which is her biography of Dickens's mistress. And I think in a way, um, Jane Austen, A Life is a great place to start with reading a biography of Jane Austen. I think in some ways it is a good biography, but while I think Claire Tomlin is an excellent biographer, I completely disagree with all of her literary criticism. And this is quite interesting because I found this both in Jane Austen in Life and also in The Invisible Woman where she was talking about Dickens's work. I just think I have completely different opinions on literature to Claire Tomlin and I just disagree with all of her opinions on books and also like all of the ways in which she uses her opinions on books to draw inferences about people, I suppose. So one of the things that really bothered me in Jane Austen and life is that she goes to some lengths to try and suggest that all of the comic characters in Jane Austen's works, um, especially in Pride and Prejudice and Sensibility and Northanger Abbey, are left over from her juvenilia, basically. They're left over from the early first drafts and they should have been edited out. They're kind of getting in the way of the serious stuff that Jane Austen was trying to do. And I just think that's like such a misinterpretation of Jane Austen and it makes me really cross because Jane Austen is hilarious and that's one of the reasons why I love Jane Austen. And I feel like trying to suggest that her comic characters are lesser um, and kind of must be from her younger days um, because they're less kind of important and less well done than her more serious characters. Like I just think that was completely wrong. I think they're her most wonderful creations and it really bothered me. And the other thing um, that Claire Tomalin talks about in Jane Austen Life, which I didn't really approve of and didn't get on with, is that she she suggests that Jane Austen was unhappy through most of her life, partly because she didn't get married. The suggestion that Jane Austen was somehow someone who was very, very unhappy, like, I just, if you read Jane Austen's letters, that's not, that's not the impression of who you get at all. Um, the, the ways in which we can look into Jane Austen's life through her own words in her letters, she just, she just doesn't seem like she's just full of life and cheerfulness um, and I feel like Claire Tomlin paints a very kind of sombre solemn picture of Jane Austen which I don't think is right and I disagree with. So basically in some ways I think Jane Austen Life is a wonderful biography but I also like disagree with some of Claire Tomlin's um, inferences and judgments um, I suppose so I sort of have very mixed feelings. I should say as well it's been like six or seven years since I read Jane Austen and Life so I might have like over exaggerated these things in my mind since then, but I definitely do remember having those few problems with the book when I read it. Next, my second favourite Jane Austen biography is this. This is The Real Jane Austen, A Life in Small Things by Paula Byrne. And this I just finished reading about two days ago. And I really enjoyed this. This was a very good and interesting biography. Um, so this is another biography that I would say is not a good place to start with Jane Austen because it is not chronological, which means I think if you don't know about Jane Austen's life and if you're not familiar already with some of the figures in her family, um, then I think you might find this a little bit confusing. So I think this is maybe a Jane Austen biography to read as your second biography or to read if you like know a bit about her life from like reading her Wikipedia page. I don't think you need to have read tons of other stuff about Jane Austen's life um, to read this but I think if you know nothing about her life you might find bits of this a little bit confusing. So this biography is quite different in its structure. It is not arranged chronologically, it is arranged basically thematically. 
what Paula Byrne does in this book is pick out 18 objects um, from history, some of which sort of actually belong to and are connected with Jane Austen, and some of which are just kind of things from the time Jane Austen was living in. Um, and she uses these objects as a starting point, a jumping off place to talk about a particular kind of theme basically in Jane Austen's life. So one chapter takes as this object a subscription list uh, which we have to a novel um, where Jane Austen had subscribed to receive a copy of a new novel by one of her favourite authors um, and Paula Byrne uses that item to talk about Jane Austen's love of literature and what books she liked to read um, and then another chapter is on um, an East Indian shawl and talks about Jane Austen's kind of interactions with the world and how even if maybe she didn't travel outside of England um, she was kind of connected to a lot of different places in the world through various members of her family and things like that. But it is I think a really interesting way to structure a biography because it does mean that there are lots of details and lots of things explored that don't necessarily get looked at in other Jane Austen biographies. There were definitely anecdotes um, and moments and things talked about in this biography which I haven't read in any other Jane Austen biographies before and um, bearing in mind this is my sixth Jane Austen biography um, and I just found it a really really interesting read. I will say that this book is nearly 10 years old um, and in the first chapter it talks a little bit about um, disability and mental health and I feel like the language it uses is a little bit dated now, like the language that um, is used felt a little bit off to me, um, but that wasn't something I found in the rest of the book, it was just that first chapter and um, there were a few things that I didn't feel were expressed in the most sensitive way I suppose, um, but the rest of the book I thought was a very strong, um, a really interesting and engaging biography and then engaged with different elements of Jane Austen as a person and Jane Austen's life which I think are often not explored in the same way in other books about Jane Austen. And I think the the vision that Paula Byrne has of Jane Austen is much more similar to my vision of Jane Austen um, in comparison to for example Claire Tomalin's. Um, like I think the portrait of Jane Austen that is painted in this book feels much more to me like the kind of Jane Austen you see in her letters, um, which I just really enjoyed because the Jane Austen that is brought to life in this biography felt like the Jane Austen that I have in my head, um, which is just something that I really enjoyed. Finally, I wanted to mention my favourite Jane Austen biography, which is Jane Austen at Home by Lucy Worsley. I love Lucy Worsley, she's one of my favourite historians, I think she's wonderful. And I really, really enjoyed Jane Austen at Home when I read it a few years ago. Again, as with the Paula Byrne, I feel like Lucy Worsley's um, vision of Jane Austen aligns quite well with my vision of Jane Austen. Um, I really, really enjoyed Jane Austen at Home. So Jane Austen at Home is organised through and ordered around the various different homes that Jane Austen lived in her life. I and mean, it kind of takes home and Jane Austen's relationship with home and her writing about home as its central theme, I suppose. But I would say that it is um, a much more straightforward biography than the real Jane Austen, A Life in Small Things, because it is more chronological. My impression when I read it was that it was quite accessible, but I have heard a few people um, since who have read it say that they found it not very accessible as people who didn't know much about Jane Austen's life, so maybe it's not the best place to start with a biography of Jane Austen, but for me it is a wonderful biography of Jane Austen and I think my favourite thing actually, my favourite thing about Jane Austen at home is that you can just tell that Lucy Worsley loves Jane Austen. Her enthusiasm just like lifts off the page and you can just tell how much she loves Jane Austen, how much she is fascinated by Jane Austen, how much she wants to know more about her and I just love that. I think it's wonderful um, and that's such a rich wonderful reading experience especially if you are someone who loves Jane Austen and you want to know more about her life but also you want to read about her life from the perspective of someone who also loves Jane Austen too and they're kind of going on that journey together and it's great. So I highly highly recommend Jane Austen at Home, it is a wonderful biography. Before I go today I did also just want to mention the letters of Jane Austen. I wasn't necessarily intending to mention this in this video but I also feel like if you're interested in Jane Austen's life you should read her letters and her letters are wonderful and yes some of them are mundane and boring and they're very much about ordinary everyday life but Jane Austen's wit is there in her letters and her letters
letters, some of them are hilarious and wonderful um, and they're just filled with little details that kind of make you feel like you know Jane Austen in a wonderful way. So yes, there are many amazing biographies out there, um, but I would highly recommend reading Jane Austen's letters as well if you're interested in her life and finding out a bit more about her as a person. So there we go, that is all I wanted to say for now. Please do let me know down in the comments if you have read any biographies of Jane Austen, what are your favourites and what do you like and not like about various biographies. And that's that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.